Hello, welcome to the midweek edition of Racing the Wing. We're at Happy Valley on a Wednesday night for a nine race program and we've got it covered for you all right here on the show. Joined in the studio to look at it even closer by Paul Alley and Nick Child. And Nick, race number five, it's a really, really good race. It certainly is, Mark. Yeah, it's an absolute ripper of a race, isn't it? It's the, the Cricket Club Valley Stakes. It's over 1,200 metres, some really nice horses there, none more so and the vastly improved How Deep Is Your Love, and he's got a new jockey this time as well. He does indeed. Mick D takes over. We'll have a look at his trial and focus on him throughout the show as well. Paul Lully's here after some huge jackpots on the weekend. Anything on Wednesday night? Yeah, we've got one. We've got a uh, triple trio jackpot of 1.6 million, so that should get over uh, 4 million for that one. Yeah, that, look, that race five, it's a very tricky race, uh, uh, that one as well. So, and the, and the last is a good one as well. Tuesday morning out at Shah Tin, there were trials and they were on the grass. The most interesting runner all day went around in the first. His name was Wellington. He was on trial to head to the UK and this is what he did. A length away is Wellington on the far side packing Treadmiller and then came Bravehearts towards the grandstand rail who's starting to pick up Super Football on the far side. Three links to Snaffles. The leader is Dragon's Luck with Wellington packing Treadmill. Beauty Charge at them late. Bravehearts on the outside. Dragon's Luck in front. Beauty Charge now gets to the lead and Beauty Charge will beat Bravehearts. Photo third. Dragon's Luck or Wellington packing Treadmill. Snaffles and at the rear on the far side Super Football the last last of them. You know, as, as we're seeing now, very, very hot weather conditions. Had a long chat with Bedell b before the trial and uh, he executed our plans perfectly. It's very pleased to see the horse uh, stay on the bridle to the line. And, um, you, know, uh, you know, we're really pleased with him today. Showed a lot of uh, power and energy. Richard, this is a path that you've trodden before going to, to Royal Ascot. So uh, for how long has this been sort of earmarked as the plan? I know you've always spoken about wanting to travel this horse. Yeah, you know, our priority was the, was the Hong Kong races. Uh, and if we had a horse at the end of the season to come to Ascot, we, you know, it was always an option. And uh, I was only going to do it if, we, if the horse was 100%. And um, delighted with his physical condition. And uh, we're looking forward to the challenges ahead. That's his trainer, Richard Gibson. Nick, you're the best person to talk about Ascot and why he might be the horse to go there and be super competitive. Yeah, look, it, it, you know, the race is over six furlongs, 1,200 metres. It's a straight course. Takes a bit of getting. This horse stays further. They'll go a good pace. I think he's the perfect horse to go for that race, Paul. Yeah, he looks uh, sort of a bulletproof type of horse, doesn't he? Like, he, he's nice and relaxed when he goes to the races. He's a big, strong horse. So he's obviously the ideal horse to travel. Yeah, no lucky swainess to take on over there either. But we need to focus now to Wednesday night. Alfie Chan, unfortunately, still not... Uh well enough to take his rides on Wednesday night. He was out to, through illness on the weekend and race three number four at Jazz Club is now Karis Teton. That is the only change for this meeting as we check out the details with the nine races taking place at Happy Valley on the B course. Meeting number 79 of 88. So we're down to single figures for the season to go. And the first race at 6.45. The two races we focus on, race number five, the Cricket Club Valley Stakes, the Class 2 at 8.45, and the Windy Gap Handicap, the Class 2 over the 1,650 metres. Race number five, first leg of the Triple Trio, rewarding together and sixth in the Group 3, Shatin Bar's last start. How deep is your love? Same weight as second to Eason last time. Eason, he carries three pounds more from the win over how deep is your love explosive witnesses second up for the best part of 11 or 12 months nordic dragon into class two for the first time power kep a last start winner down in grade as is winning icy at his last appearance on the turf he did finish down the track on the all weather since then he's got a lightweight and a very good draw nick does winning icy yeah as we take a look at the at the speed map majestic star a horse that uh, can roll forward i think he, he might well do uh, and lead them off here. How deep is your love? Um, look, he might just be able to sit that bit closer. He actually um, went forward and, and made most of the running in a recent trial. Street Scream uh, towards his inside and rewarding together. Eason probably follow Paul. Yeah, I think uh, Nordic Dragon, if a stable mate does lead, he can set up a, maybe the pace could be slightly quicker than good to slow, but uh, I think he'll get a nice run. Power Kept went forward last time and had a really good run when he won, but from a wide draw, I think he's going to have to go back. And we know Explosive Witness doesn't have too much early gain speed. Our focus is going to be the horse in the orange colours though. How deep is your love? And he's trained by John Size. John, how deep is your love as a horse who's really made rapid strides for, for you and your stable? Um, excellent running defeat last time. Yeah, it's been, it's been racing well uh, right from the first day. He's been uh, 
He's been solid in his form. Um, he's only three year old, so he's uh, done an exceptional job. He clearly has a very good constitution, John, as you say. I mean, just a three year old, but for what he's actually done in, in such a short space of time, I mean, that's obviously a great trait to have, isn't it? Of course, yeah. He's got a good constitution, good temperament, sound, um, takes his racing quite well. And um, he's sort of learning and stepping uh, up in grade. Um, he's coming up to the mark every time uh, we ask him, so he couldn't do any more. He reopposes Eason, who beat him last time. I had to give him nine pounds last time. Um, slightly better off with the weights with him. Um, I guess in the form he's in, are you you're confident you can turn that form around? Oh, no, I wouldn't be confident. Of course, uh, Happy Valley, there's a fair bit to come into play there. But uh, the horse is well, and uh, he should run his normal race. He'll run well again. It's just a matter of the circumstances of the race, whether he can, uh, whether he can win or not. Had a trial, John. Um, he had a new jockey on as well. How, how did you? How did that? How did that sort of decision come about? Obviously, I know his connections probably have a little bit to, to play with that decision. Yeah, we'll try uh, try a new jock, uh, Michael D, and, and see how he goes. If he's um, He's, he seems to be riding very well, and uh, as his opportunities have come, he'll probably do very well in Hong Kong. That was Nick with John Size. Just on that trial, Paul, he led up, but he was quite keen in front, wasn't he? He was, yeah. Look, he, he was very keen. They weren't going overly quick, but he was quite keen uh, there. Look, I mean, he's possible to lead if, if uh, in here because it's quite a muddling sort of race, but I think he's more likely just to sit outside the leader. Yeah, I think so. And, and look, he's drawn five, so... I think they've got options. If they did want to lead and he jumped well, then I guess he's good enough to be put on the pace. All right, that is how deep is your love. We move on, Nick, to rewarding together. Now, this is group company last time. That's Victor, the winner on the rail. Lucky Swainess wins the race. He comes back down to class two, and he has won a six from 12 course and distance. Yeah, he's got a super record, hasn't he? Um, all of his winning has come over this uh, this six furlong journey, anything from good to, to good to firm ground. So he loves to hear his who's rattle. Um, look, he's been well held in his last three. They have been deeper contests, however. Um, needs to return to his best, especially at the top weight off a triple figure mark here. Yeah, because his last one was off 95, he's at this 103 rating now and he has to carry seven pounds more than any other horse. And saying that, he does like it here at um, Happy Valley. I've included him on a minor line. He's carried 134 to victory, he's got one pound more mm. than that in race number five. This horse, Paul, he is coming into class two for the first time. And his last two starts, he's been very good. He's named Nordic Dragon. Yeah, look, what they've done, they've changed the tactics. Early on in the, his season, he used to lead. They've, they've taken him back and been a lot more patient. Uh, Hugh Bowman has been riding him. He's been a lot more patient on the horse. And you can see what, what's happened. He's really improved with those changes of tactics. Yeah, and, and having spoke to Hugh, I think after maybe that race, or the, the you know, two starts back, he was always confident that he could go up into this grade and compete, which I think he will. But yeah, two excellent rides from Hugh, but uh, different jockey this time. Matthew Poon, the man. There's his report card, Nick. Yeah, look, he's, he's got a good record, hasn't he? Obviously, he hit that little bit of a, a lull. He had those three runs where I think a few people were left scratching their head, thinking, well, um, maybe he has gone off the ball a bit. But he's bounced back well and truly and um, clearly loves it at Happy Valley. Yeah, he's a really, uh, really good Happy Valley horse. And looking at Danny Shum's uh, rides, uh, draw, rides uh, his uh, uh, charges here, in race five, he's got both Majestic Star and Nordic Dragon. I thought Majestic Star might lead, which would suit Nordic Dragon. G1X, and he gets back, he hits the line strongly as well, and he's had a good season. Flying Silver's been downgraded. Co-partner Ambition just cannot draw a barrier. He's in the outside gate once again. We move on, Paul, to Power Kept. Now, he's a last start winner. This was down in Class 3. He's placed a couple of times in this grade, but yet to win. Yeah, I don't like him in this race. I just, because he's the, the way he's been drawn, I don't think he's going to get the race run to suit. He's drawn eight, so he's going to have to go back. This way he sat sort of one out and one back, got the perfect run and won nicely, but I don't see that happening in this. Yeah, look, he's beaten victory scholars here. Form's probably not up to, to what some of the others form. Um, is at the moment, but look, he's honest, he tries and he likes it here. Speaking of liking it here, Nick, this horse has had a really good season, winning ice, he gets in, good draw, lightweight, he too likes to get back and run on. He does, yeah, he'd it, it, like a good pace to aim at, which he might well get in this, obviously four from 12, course and distance, reads uh, reads nicely. Um, I think you can probably forget and forgive, he's, he's all weather run last time out, but good uh, good stall here, he's got a, he's got a lightweight, Karis Teton ride, so 
There are certainly positives there. Yeah, he's got a really good uh, turn of foot, hasn't he? And he did hit the line and win that race. Well. He's been back to Chung Fa, Paul, since failing on the or whether that was two starts ago, that win. Here's his trial up at Chung Fa, and he was able to win that too. Yeah, he won it really nicely, uh, this trial. Again, it wasn't an overly taxing uh, trial from him, but um, look, he, it's just a maintenance uh, trial for him, wasn't it? Yeah, confirmed his, his well-being. Obviously, Casper does like to send them up to, uh, to Chung Fa, and he's just had a nice leg stretch there, nicely on the bridle. You can see the, the couple in behind just being held together as well. So, um, look, hard to, to glean too much from it and, and read too much into it, but what it does tell us is that he comes to the race in pretty good heart. He does. That star contact to his inside running second in that trial. He runs at the meeting in another race. But your selections, Paul? I'm going to go with uh, Nordic Dragon in this race. Look, since he's been getting back, he's looked a different horse and he's hit the line really strong. I think he's up to this grade. How deep is your love? He's obviously going to be the hardest danger. I'm going to put Majestic Star in because if he can dictate from the front, I mean, his win was off 91. He's a higher rated at 96 and rewarding to give a has to carry the weight. 6 2 three, one. Yeah, I'll go with uh, how deep is your love here. He just continues to sort of raise the bar. And they've put him up a few pounds uh, since his last run. But I think he can defy his mark of, of 96 and, and go on again. Uh, Nordic Dragon in for second for all the points made by Paul. Look, he's, he's clearly a nice horse going uh, in the right direction. Eason goes in a last time. He actually beat uh, the selection last time out. So he must be considered. And Majestic Star put him in at a bit of a price to, to round out the top four. Two, six, four, three. There it is. That is a preview for the Cricket Club Valley Stakes Race Number 5. We're going to take a break here on Racing to Win. Back to check out all of the information for Race 9 right after this. Welcome back to Racing to Win. Happy Valley Wednesday night is our focus on this edition. We've seen race number five, so we look now to the last, the Windy Gap Handicap over the 1650, another Class 2 event. The Irishman is on the class drop, ran fourth last time behind Red Line. Bourbonnet, he won on the weekend, carries an extra seven pounds for it. Savaquin's coming back in trip. He's a three-time course and distance winner. Mr Ascendancy has his second look at Happy Valley. Encounter has a great record course and distance. Sheerful Days has won five from nine course and distance, but is really struggling this season. Atella Begil, he's been to Happy Valley five times, but all over the 1,200 metres. Sunny Star has blinkers going on, and Winning Dragon a winner two starts ago and ran fourth down in grade behind a Prime Minister last time. Nick, as we see Winning Dragon finding the lead. And look, he, he can do that, can't he? I mean, five runs ago, three starts back, he, he did go forward. And he's got a very light weight here as well, decent draw on five. So certainly expect him to roll to the front. Encountered, I don't think, will be too far away. He's drawn wide, so he's going to have to cross um, the sort of the face of the field here. But the horse needs outside. Bourbon Air is another one that can show a bit of pace. And he's actually drawn one further out in 11. So both of those horses might try and come across, though the latter might be caught out a little bit uh, deep. Uh, Everyone's Delight is another horse who can show speed. He's drawn well, Paul, in three. Yeah, exactly. And the Irishman's drawn the inside, so they'll, he'll stand, sit a little bit closer. Thing with Encounter, he has won at uh, Happy Valley from Barrier 12 in the past leading, so we know he's got that early gate speed if winning Dragon doesn't want to lead. That is a look at the speed map for race number nine. Well, Bourbon Air won on stormy Saturday at Shah Tin to see how he's done since. Nick spoke to his trainer, John Size. John Size, Bourbon Air was a winner for you on the on the weekend. You're, you're happy to, to back him up quickly, but um, he really does revel in those softer conditions, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He's he's won a race by uh, six lengths in the in the wet track, and then uh, he won again the other day. So that's uh, what he's looking for. So hopefully uh, we'll get some rain for Wednesday night. That might help him out. First go around Happy Valley, were you always sort of wanting to bring him here? Or was it just a case of where the races presented themselves? No, we'll get at the end of the season, there's uh, not a lot available for him. So um, we'll take him there. I think yeah, he, he might handle it all right. He's a reasonably quiet horse and he travels OK. So I think uh, he'll probably be OK at uh, Happy Valley new trip as well coming coming back in trip i mean to some they might sort of label him as a, a sort of a stayer if you will in inverted commas but um coming back to 1650 i think he finds the 1400 a bit short but uh his his previous uh, race he ran well at 1600 so uh, maybe he can compete he's he's um normally up on the in the first three or four in a race so uh happy valley it might suit him we never know with a horse like him, John, that you are backing up quicker, I don't imagine you do a great deal with them in between, do you? No, there's not, not much to do. He just has a rest after after uh, Saturday and then uh, a little bit of exercise and we go to the races. 
He is owned by the Sioux family. He was one of uh, a couple of winners for them on the weekend. Um, their horses are going well. Your horses are going well. So there's there's a lot to be happy with at the moment. Yeah, well, I, I hope uh, he can run well again. Um, he's he's uh, had a, a problem previously, but he seems to have come back to good form for racing. So he might win another one. There he is, Nick John Sires on Bourbon Air. Does his winning chances depend on the weather gods? I think so. Um, obviously, both his wins have come when there has been a lot of mud flying. Um, obviously, we saw an extreme weather condition there on the weekend. And the time he won before, he absolutely bolted up and it was it was near bottomless. So I think he is, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It helps him a lot. He obviously really relishes it. There is some chance of rain on Wednesday night yeah. too, so uh, you'll need to check the forecast and the pictures to see if the rain is falling by the 9th. We move on though, Paul, to a horse that uh, you've had in quite often, the Irishman. Speaking of rainy conditions, in cheerful days, as mentioned, he's up in the ratings and just struggling with it. Yeah, I can't have cheerful days. I, I don't mind the Irishman, though. He's drawn nicely in barrier number one. I think he's going to be sort of three back on the inside. don't know if he totally enjoyed these conditions. He seemed to get through them all right, but uh, he has uh, raced pretty well on top of the ground as well. I thought it was a nice enough run from here. Yeah, he's a winner on good to firm, so I think that, that certainly rings true. And um, look, he's downgraded, so we should find this a little bit easier than the class one last time out. And look, to his credit, he has kept on quite well. So he's, he's definitely the class horse in the race. That is the flying red lion who made a back-to-back -back wins winning that. He's been back to the trials too, Nick, at uh, Happy Valley since then, the Irishman. There he is just in behind there. The other horse was Mr Ascendancy. Now, he was being ridden along a fair way from home in this trial. He was uh, under plenty of pressure, wasn't he, as we uh, we sort of take in this, uh, this closing... Uh, part of the trial. Um, the Irishman, I thought, uh, I thought trialled nicely enough, uh, not being put under any, any real pressure at all. But uh, Mr. Ascendancy, I'm sort of, uh, I'm wanting to reserve judgment on him for, for the moment. But yeah, it's an awful trial, mm -hmm. really, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy just to uh, watch him go around. Um, but the Irishman was a good run. Yeah, just quickly on Mr. Ascendancy, his only run here was actually yeah. very good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I do get him in on a, a minor line on that basis. He carried 119 pounds, mm -hmm. second in class, 226 in this race. We move on, Paul. Speaking of favourites of yours, here's another one of them. Encountered, loves the 1650, cheerful days. He's just about been in every replay so far. Savaquin doesn't miss too many Wednesday nights, neither does Berlin Tingo. And everyone's delight had an excuse with mucus in the system last time, but that was after this race because he's been around on the all-weather. Yeah, he has. Look, I, yeah, I do like this horse. I mean, he's had four starts for three wins and he just got mugged late by Goritis and the other one. So uh, he just loves it here over the course and distance. They Look, they were... Took him through the four-year-old series as well. He's just drawn wide, but I, I, he's got the pace to overcome it. He has one from Barrier 12 before. Yeah, look, he's got a wonderful way of going. He just keeps going, and um, um, you know, he sort of he really does enjoy his racing. A bit more weight to carry, a bit harder here, but he's certainly a horse in form. That run was back in April, Nick, so he's yeah. been back to the trials and he's had two of them. This was a trial around his favourite track, Happy Valley. Not quite his favourite distance because they trial over the 1700 of a weekday or weekend morning when they trial. Yeah, I mean, we shan't split hairs over 50 metres, I suppose, <laughs> but uh, he didn't mind. Look, he, he went and won the trial. Um, uh, Derek was on board. Um, oh, look, I think he's, he's absolutely bounded clear to go and win this trial. I was, I was mightily impressed, Paul. Yeah, it was a really good trial. He obviously just really thrives at Happy Valley. He's one of these Happy Valley sort of specialists here, and this just uh, backs it up. You can see there um, at Happy Valley, five starts, three wins and a, uh, a second. But uh, and just uh, over the distance, five, uh, three wins, a second and a third, so never worse than third. And his jockey's one for one, and that jockey is Derek Long. He rides for Manfred Man. So that is encountered. One more to have a look at here, uh, Paul. It is Atala Begil. Now, we have seen him running on really well at Happy Valley over shorter trips. Sunny Star, he gets the blinkers on for the first time. His first few starts for Casper have been over at Sha Tin. Yeah, so he's coming back to his favourite course here, Sunny Star, with a lightweight barrier number two. I'm going to include him. I, I just thought his runs at Sha Tin haven't been awful, and we know he loves it at, uh, here at Happy Valley. And Atala Begil, I'm going to include him as well, because, as you mentioned, this 1650 looks ideal for him. Yeah, it does look first go that he's going to run over this trip, but it would seemingly be a, a decent fit for him. And, and as for Sunny Star, well, let's not forget, he, he was actually placed in the January Cup, wasn't he, last Last season, I think so. Yeah, he has got that bit of class and does like the valley. He does indeed. So that's a look at uh, the breakdown, Paul, of race number nine. Your favourite's got to be on top, doesn't he? Yeah, I like Encountered. So he's, uh, I think he's just a genuine, honest horse. So he goes on top uh, to beat the Irishman. Uh, should get a nice run just in behind. A Sunny Star with a lightweight and a Tullabagil running on late. 7 1, 11 and 9.
Yeah, also uh, got the seven on top here and counted. Look, he's, uh, he's in very good form and uh, presenting fresh up after a really good trial, I think. Certainly will see him to good effect. Uh, the Irishman up at the top goes in, downgraded, good draw uh, on balance of form. It's some of the strongest on show. Well, Tyler Bagheel in for third, and I'll throw Mr. Ascendancy in, um, sort of hanging my hat on that one good run here at Happy Valley. 7196. That was nice and easy. It's all about encountered race nine number seven for both Paul and Nick in the final race of the night. Of course, we've previewed two here on the show. Nine race program, Paul, means there are seven other winners to find. And who are they? Well, Lifeline Visions has taken uh, 32 starts to get down into class five uh, with consistency. I think he can finally win a race here. Uh, Encanto prepared. Uh, look, he's a, the, probably the best rated horse. And he's coming over the 1800 for the first time at Happy Valley. Sergeant Pepper from Barrier One. Multi Supers, uh, another horse. Horse that's a leader. Uh, one for all. He's another leader. I've gone for a lot of leaders here. Uh, one for all was uh, on a four timer. He's just going so well at the moment. Dancing Code's never been to Happy Valley, but his racing style, he should really suit Happy Valley. And Romantic Lau, he's been in great form recently. And you can get a breakdown of all of those races on the website. Jump onto hkjc.com, click on audio and video, and you can go race by race by race. But you won't need to find Paul's best bet there because it's right here. Yeah, exactly, and that's uh, encountered in the last. I think he can win the last here, get across from his wide draw, loves the course and distance. So he's the best. Got to make Encanto prepared. He's as, uh, as the long shot. He's his first start over the 1800 metres at Happy Valley. Has been placed over 2,000 in the past. Most of his wins are over uh, 1650, but the 18 I think will be ideal for him, and he's drawn nicely. And we'll do uh, the play in race four. The downgraded and dared multi super in the first starter, Joyful Hunter. QQP one six and seven. Yeah, best bet for me on uh, Wednesday night, race eight, number four, Hammer On. He's going up in trip, which I think will suit him. He's, uh, his two runs so far have been decent in defeat. So hopefully the, uh, the informed Luke Ferraris can bag another winner. The long shot, number six, uh, race number six, number 10, to Geppi, Tony Millard and Karis Teaton. They've put some headgear on this horse now, and he's, he's got some okay form. And the play, race five, two, four, and six, how deep is your love, Eastern and Nordic Dragon in the fifth. Going for Dancing Code, he's had two starts, he's run second both times over at Shards and he does come here to Happy Valley for the first time, he trialled here last November so it's been a while since he's seen the track but he has had a look at it. Telecom Cheetah goes back to the 1800 metres, he's a two time winner over the distance, draws out in barrier 10, couple of runs back from a break is going to be a plus and we'll go the play race 7. Son Pak Fu up in the weights again, Armour Eagles fairly consistent and Dancing Code looks hard to beat 1-2-4 in a QQP. That has been Racing to Win for Happy Valley Wednesday night Nick and we're back to Sha Tin on Sunday. We certainly are, yeah, normal service resume there but um, we've got nine races coming up from the Valley and very looking forward to them. Yeah and 11 at Sha Tin on yeah. uh, Sunday with, an, with the Griffin race on there. We do indeed, so uh, it'll be a four o'clock start uh, at Char 10, but before we get there, we need to go to Happy Valley for a 6.45 start on Wednesday night.